making a Stuart model steam plant, this one's part 42, cutting the hole for the drainage sump and fixing an error that I made in the last episode. Here's the story so far, approximately half of the baseboard is now planked with mahogany. I'm giving the planks a bit of a rub down with some emery cloth because the edges of them are quite sharp. Once I've done that I turn the board round because it's the other side of the board where I need to make the hole for the drainage sump. What I'm about to do is a very simple job. Now I've turned the board around to do the job, everything is upside down and back to front. I really do need to make sure that I cut the hole in the baseboard in the right place at the right side. And first of all, I'm sitting the boiler's mounting plate in the place it's going to be. I don't need to measure each side to make sure that this part's in the middle. As long as the line on the metal plate lines up with the line on the wood, everything's fine. As I've just mentioned, everything is upside down and back to front, so I thought it would be a good idea to put the boiler in place to double check that I'm putting the grate where I want it to be. Here's the brass grate in the approximate position. Thankfully, I didn't have to make this piece of grating. It came out of a model steamboat quite a while back. I think it looks good, it's the right size, and it's perfect for the job. My marking out is not too good. I don't know why I'm not very good at this. It's quite simple, but it always looks messy. I measured the metal plate, halved the dimension, put a mark on the board, and now I have a guideline which marks the center of the grating. Here is a prime example of my haphazard marking out, but at least I know where I need to cut the piece of wood, and that's all that matters. Just think of it as simple CAD drawing for village idiots. I need to drill a hole from the edge of the baseboard into the area that I'm going to cut out, which will house the drainage sump. To arrive at this dimension though, I need to clamp a piece of mahogany planking on top. This clip shows that the distance from the top of the mahogany plank to the bottom of the baseboard is 2 centimeters. I need to drill a hole from the edge of the baseboard into the sump area, following the line that goes to the edge of the baseboard. Here, using my small Proxon motor tool, I'm drilling a hole in the sump area. And now using a drill bit in my larger drill, which is one imperial size above 5 sixteenths of an inch, I'm very carefully drilling in from the edge, making sure that the drill is square. At this stage, the last thing that I want to happen is for the drill to break through the top or the bottom of the baseboard. In this clip you can clearly see that the hole is not in the middle of the main wooden baseboard. Why did I drill the hole the next size up from 5 sixteenths? Well I don't want my 5 sixteenths pipe that I'm going to make to be a tight fit. I need a bit of clearance because this pipe, which will be buried in the baseboard, will get warm when the steam plant is in use and expand. Now it's time for the very messy part, which is cutting out the hole in the baseboard. I do have a very small Proxon jigsaw, but I find it to be of no use whatsoever. It's more or less powerful enough for the job, but the blades break very easily. That's why I'm using a full-size jigsaw. The job starts by drilling a hole approximately in the middle of the part to be cut out, after which the jigsawing operation starts. Ideally, this should be done outside because it's covering my bench in sawdust, but it's raining outside. And not wishing to be electrocuted, this is a safer option. Here you can see what I'm doing. I've roughly cut a hole in the middle of the part I'm going to cut out. This allows me to align the jigsaw more accurately to do the sides. I'm more likely to make a mistake by diving straight into the job and going down the sides. When I'm using my bandsaw for a similar job, I also do this. I cut a lump out of the middle, which gives me room to manoeuvre. Because this is the rough cut of the jigsaw blade, I tried to stay mainly on the inside of the line because I'm going to finish it off with a file like this. When I use a jigsaw, the blades seem to have a bad habit of not cutting square. It's probably something I'm doing, but anyway, I finish it off with a file, nice and easy, and I end up with a very accurate rectangular hole in the board. This took quite a long time to do, but it's worth it. It's looking better already. It's one of these things, I could make a thorough mess of this, the hole really doesn't need to be square as long as I can get the tank inside it. And no one's ever going to notice this, as the sump tank will be buried with a grate over the top of it. It's not OCD or anything like that, 
I take a pride in my work, and my motto is always, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Time now for a bit of light sanding using some emery cloth, just to remove the edges. The workbench is looking very clear again now, but it did look a mess. I blew away all the sawdust using my airline. One of the holes in this piece of brass grating is not in a good place. I did modify that though. Here you can see how I've moved the position of the hole at one end. I used a small twist drill in my Proxon motor tool just to persuade the hole to be a little bit more inboard. For the next part of the job I need to make a tank that fits in this recess in the board. I'm going to make it using a piece of square brass tubing. This is too short at one inch. This is some steel tubing that would be perfect, but it would go rusty. So just before I started voicing over this video, I spoke to Jackie at Blackgates Engineering and ordered a piece of one and a quarter inch square. Right at the end of the last video, I made a mistake. One of the pieces of mahogany isn't stuck down firmly to the board. You can see here it's moving. The solution was to run some cyanoacrylate adhesive into the gap and then clamp the entire board in my large bench vise. And then I used two thick pieces of mahogany at one side to press the loose plank against the main baseboard and at the other side for some support on the baseboard I used a thick piece of mahogany all the way to the top of the baseboard. The long piece of mahogany at the back is to stop the baseboard from bending. This idea definitely works as I tighten the handle of the vise some CA glue came out of the joint and I'm removing it here with a scrap piece of planking. And here's something new, a gratuitous shot of the glue drying as a special treat. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.